So I started back on CPAP therapy. I started CPAP therapy February 2019 while in medical crisis from medication injury caused severe apnea and uh, I'm trying to think of the timeline of events. I won't bother going into detail, but I wore CPAP religiously uh, for over two years and it helped the apnea, but it never improved my quality of sleep at all. And uh, never increased my sleep at all. After two years of CPAP, I was still only sleeping one or two hours a night. So I stopped. It was traumatizing. I believe I really was too ill for it. I didn't have the right machine. It was turned too high. My health wasn't being properly assessed. My needs weren't being assessed. I wasn't being followed or offered follow-up. It just was wrong. I wasn't getting proper treatment. And uh, I stopped about eight months ago. I would just the whole two years wake up traumatized and in a state of shock and low oxygen and often not breathing with the CPAP. Just a lot of complex things going on. And I became so desperate a week and a half ago, a week ago, I swore I would never wear CPAP again, even if it meant death. Things were getting so scary. Uh, the strange pain in my head from low oxygen and uh, actual actual low oxygen. And I, I really... Uh, still only sleeping one, two, or three hours a night. Uh, I started not sleeping beyond 45 minutes or an hour and getting bad pains in my head and really feeling like I'm getting brain damaged and from low oxygen. Really, here, you know, here by myself, really feeling like I'm on the verge of a stroke or a heart attack in bed and thought I better start this CPAP. Even though it was a, such a terrible experience, I know my brain is being damaged from the low oxygen. I think I've done pretty good at making the right decisions throughout this by instinct instinctual decisions. So I started wearing it five days ago. The tinnitus is just roaring in my head from the CPAP. It, the tinnitus is really bad. Wearing CPAP is hard because of this iatrogenic injury from empty nose syndrome caused by an ENT surgeon. I'm at constant risk for infection, it seems, with CPAP and this condition. And uh, I just felt this was sh what I should do. I have no other options. And if nothing else, it might help raise my oxygen. So, to my surprise, I slept two nights in a row for three hours straight. 
I think the acute life-threatening insomnia is coming from my breathing is so shallow, so slow, that I can keep going during the day. My breathing is slower than normal people, but it's too slow to stay asleep. My breathing is too slow to stay asleep because it becomes dangerous. My oxygen drops. I'm assuming this is what's happening. I am not being provided qualified medical care. I'm not being offered any qual any medical care. But this, from all my research and everything I know and understand, I believe I'm not sleeping because my breathing is way too slow. You need to be breathing fast enough to stay healthy and alive and your brain is healthy and you're not oxygen starved. Your organs aren't being uh, damaged by oxygen deprivation. So... Amazingly enough, I got someone to turn this machine down. The machine is forced air all night down your throat, into your lungs, in down your, whether you're a mouth breather or nose breather. So I've had two, uh, two nights of three hours of sleep. My body is really ill and weak, but three hours of sleep in a row really does good things for my head, for my brain, for my thinking skills. And I feel like doing things and picking things up and, you know, starting little by little to do a little bit of house cleaning. Um, oh, the tinnitus, my head hurts so bad. I feel like I'm, I've got an a sinus infection already from five days of CPAP. I really feel like I'm infected. Um, so I'm tr trying today to do a little bit of house cleaning and stuff. Whenever this happens, whenever I get a little bit of sleep and I start to do a little bit of house cleaning, it, there's something wrong with my spine. The spine pain, the electrical pain throughout my body. Whenever this happens, whenever I start doing a little bit of house cleaning, sitting, sorting papers, anything, the spine pain starts and my whole body feels under attack. Nerves, like nerve damage, like nerve, electrical nerve issues. It's like my, it takes my breath away. It, it, it is so terrifying and traumatizing. It takes my breath away. I feel like I'm crashing. I feel like I'm crashing right now. Since I turned the camera on, I feel like I'm crashing from the pain and the fear, electrical stuff going all throughout my body. My, my ribs feel like something something's wrong with my diaphragm something is wrong with the mechanism of my breathing it's so frightening breathing is what i've learned from researching trying to solve my medical issues trying to troubleshoot and trying to you know figure out what kind of medical care i need because doctors won't the act of breathing is so much more complex than people realize. One aspect, oh, I just, I just feel like my whole entire self, my whole body, all the nerves are going just crazy. The nervous system. Is like electricity and it's terrifying. And the tinnitus is so the tinnitus is so loud. I I feel like my brain is shutting down. 
and this thoracic nerve pain, like stress, and the rib cage, the diaphragm, I don't know what's happening to me. I I'm frightened. That's why I came on here to talk is because I'm frightened. Another th part of this that gets worse with the ups and downs, the ups and downs of seeing little bits of improvement, like the three nights of, the two nights of three hours of sleep really does wonders for my brain and makes me feel good in my head. My body's still really sick and weak and my breathing is messed up. Uh, but the ups and downs and the isolation is so traumatizing. The symptoms are so traumatizing. I feel like the trauma of from all of this is just, it keeps getting worse and worse, not better. The PTSD, um, the isolation, help not coming, no hands-on support, no love and support, no friendship. I, you know, you can't make friends when you're sleeping two hours every night, 365 days a year. You you can't. It's COVID. Where could I possibly go to make friends and hang out with people? And it's not like I'm well enough to hang out with people and get to know people either. I am, you know, really sick and it affects every part of me. Well, I can't properly represent myself when I'm this ill. You know what? I, I feel like I instantly have a sinus infection. I feel like I am barely coping here. And it's... What I'm, feel, what I'm learning is I can't properly treat some iatrogenic illnesses because of my other iatrogenic illnesses. The CPAP is difficult because of the empty nose syndrome that was caused by medical. I can't treat my MCAS because of the empty nose syndrome caused by medical. I can't treat the pain issues because of the iatrogenic illness caused by the medication injury. I can't take painkillers. I can't... Um, I. My heart and lungs can't be slowed down anymore. My breaths per minute can't be slowed down anymore than they already are by painkillers or any other drugs like that, like benzos, or I can't take drugs like that because of my medical injuries. Can't take tons of drugs. I can't take many drugs because of my apnea. My severe apnea was caused by this medical injury. There's so many conditions that were created by medical that can't be treated because of my other iatrogenic injuries. I feel like I, I, I it's not often I feel like that. I feel like this. My whole body is under attack. Like my, my nervous system, the nerves are like electrical right now, and I feel like my brain is crashing. And maybe I should just crash. Maybe I should just have a bath and try just lay in bed and watch a movie or something. It's hard to be so inactive, and then you get a little bit of energy, two nights of three hours of sleep, and just I haven't overdone it either. I've just only done, bent down lots of times to pick up papers off the floor, this, that, the other thing, uh, sort, trying to sort papers. There's 10 years worth of paper and mails, mail, business papers all over this house. Any kind of bending down or movement affects my spine. Never, ever did I have spine issues prior to this medication injury. I got in here to talk because I'm really scared. My whole body 
seems to be going crazy. Their nervous system. Darn it. I feel like ha I have another infection. And you know what? I just finished antibiotics a couple weeks ago. I have this practitioner calling tomorrow, whether or not uh, calling, because I had made an inquiry if they, if anyone could get me trazodone. I am terrified to take anything, but I am that desperate. And I don't want anybody to leave comments bitching that I shouldn't take trazodone because my life is gone here and you know, I'm so, so desperate for sleep. Can't believe how terrible I look. Anyways, I hope everyone's doing okay out there.